Day 5 of 100 Days of Tonalism. I'm M. Francis McCarthy, and uh, I welcome you to our fifth fun-filled day. Today's artist is Charles Warren Eden, and uh, the piece is called River Landscape. Um, Charles Warren Eden is the artist I've done the second largest amount of uh, images of uh, with George in this series with Georgia Ness being uh, foremost with something like over 30. But I think I'm doing probably close to 10, Charles Warren Eden. He was pretty popular back in his day. Um, I think he would be defined as a second generation tonalist. He was younger than Ness by, I believe, 20 years or so. Um, there's a, a really pretty good link I found that I'm gonna include with the uh, blog post here. It's at artsy.net. And this is a little brief summary of Charles Warren Eaton. Um, uh, it's quoted from Artsy. Uh, known as the pine trees painter in his day for his transcend transcendentalist renderings of white pines, Charles Warren Eaton was one of the profoundest interpreters of nature among the American tonalists. As a follower of James Abbott McNeil Whistler, aesthetic movement, he incorporated Asian design principles of patterning and formal abstraction in his early intimate works that dwelled on what George Ness called the human landscape. Old stone walls, worn paths, and abandoned pastures. By 1900, Eden moved to a more gestural and expressive style, especially in his favorite subjects of white pines and canal site poplars. Reminiscent of Claude Monet's serial works, Eden painted his own, his beloved pines from every imaginable vantage point and in every lighting condition, creating symbolic works of powerful and graphic imagery, often verging on complete abstraction. Not complete, folks, but abstract. Uh, verging on complete abstraction, according to this writer. Eden was also a master watercolorist and a par with his contemporaries, Winslow Homer, John Singer Sargent, and Whistler himself. So there you go, that's a pretty nice little summary. Um, well, I love the guy. I did a few of his paintings. He's really masterful. I believe he shared a studio with uh, George Ness. Uh, and he was uh, pretty uh, prolific from, no, I thought it doesn't say. His time period, 1880 to 1910. Um, he did do prints and works on paper as well. Um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about this piece. Uh, not the kind of thing I normally do again. It's, but it's cool. I like it. I mean, if I was to run across a scene like this uh, out here in New Zealand, I'd probably go for it. Um, I can say one thing about Eden, um, like this this particular painting of uh, the piece that I'm copying doesn't have those uh, specific white pines. You'll see that in a couple uh, studies uh, way down the road, probably around 70 or so. But um, like Eden, I mean, I, I certainly favor certain trees. Like out here where I live, I like the totra trees. And there's also certain types of pines that I'll never paint. I don't care for it all. Uh, I'm not into conical pines. Um, I do like the trees in this. And I think there's a really nice uh, composition. Uh, very simple uh, sky again, like uh, that uh, second one in the series. Uh, no real clouds, but um, actually you can see quite a bit of my um, ground color coming through here uh, with that uh, burnt sienna tone, which is a unifying uh, factor in Toneless painting is that you would have this colored ground and it sort of pulls everything together and gives things a bit of a zing. Um, I was pretty happy with this painting. I like the big range of greens and stuff, and I think I did a pretty uh, pretty good job of getting that uh, down. Um, you know, of course, I'm constrained by the small 5x7 size and all of these, which is, you know, a plus and a minus, but uh, all in all, I think it, it looks pretty, pretty good. I uh, see we're getting close to the end of the video. Um, thanks for viewing and uh, listening to day five. And if you want to see more of my work, it's landscapepainter.co.nz.